Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer, liaison to ACIP, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Welcome to the American College of Physicians 2022 Adult Immunization Video Series. The topic, ACIP's new adult schedule for 2022, published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Each year, ACIP updates the adult immunization schedule, summarizing its most recent recommendations, all in this easy to access reference. The graphics are designed to be colorful, eye-catching, and easy to follow. You can print a color copy to have in the exam room or at your workspace, or give it a bookmark and check it online. It's a great resource to have at your fingertips. Each year, ACIP's Adult Schedule Workgroup takes a fresh look at the schedule and makes little edits and tweaks to improve readability, clarity, and to ensure its accuracy. This year's schedule is no exception. The intro page still lists the vaccines, abbreviations, and their brand names. There's one deletion and two additions for pneumococcal vaccines. PCV13, aka Prevnar13, is out. PCV15, Vaxnivance, and PCV20, aka the new Prevnar, Prevnar20, are in. Convenient links to complete ACIP recommendations for each vaccine are still available on the front page of the document for easy access and review. Another change for 2022 is an extra step for using the schedule. Step four adds a new appendix with vaccine-specific contraindications and precautions in reference table format. Let's go through the schedule step-by-step, step, starting with table one, vaccinations by age. The age breakdown categories remain the same. The color codes and keys have also not changed. Yellow for all who meet age requirement, purple for those with additional risk factors or another indication, blue if recommended based on shared clinical decision-making, and gray, which means there is no recommendation or not applicable. The 2022 schedule reflects updated ACIP recommendations for three vaccines, zoster, pneumococcal, and hepatitis B. The new expanded Zoster vaccine recommendation applies to adults with immunocompromising conditions. To review, the live virus shingles vaccine, Zostavax, is no longer available. That's why only one Zoster vaccine, RZV, recombinant Zoster vaccine, brand name Shingrix, is listed on the schedule. It does not contain live virus. The yellow bar means everyone 50 and older needs two doses. That's not new, but here's what is. The new purple bar reflects ACIP's new two-dose series regimen for younger immunocompromised adults age 19 to 49. The pneumococcal vaccination recommendation has been somewhat simplified. Pneumococcal vaccination used to be assigned two rows on this table. Now there's only one, which combines all three vaccines, has two color codes, and overlays with the two new options. Either a two vaccine sequential combo, a dose of PCV15 followed by a dose of PPSV23, or a single dose of PCV20. The bar for those 65 and older is yellow. Everyone 65 and older needs pneumococcal vaccination. The bar for younger adults, those under 65, is purple meaning it's indicated only if an additional risk factor or other indication applies. It says see notes, which then link to ACIP's most recent complete pneumococcal recommendation. For hepatitis B vaccine, it's row on table one, it's also more colorful and incorporates updated ACIP recommendations. The hep B bar used to be all purple but with Hep B's universal age-based recommendations for those through age 59, those younger ages are now in yellow. For adults 60 and older, purple remains because it's recommended for them only if there's another risk factor or indication. Age 60 is the cutoff for the universal recommendation, but the Hep B notes are clear. 
Anyone 60 and older who does not meet a risk-based recommendation may still receive it. Next up, table two, vaccinations by medical condition and other indications. Its additional color codes also remain the same. Orange is for precaution. For red, the words are the same, but the order is different. Contraindicated now precedes not recommended in the key, but the asterisk indicating it's okay to vaccinate after pregnancy is still used. Overlays have been adjusted to provide more precise clarification of whether a vaccine is really contraindicated or just not recommended. Let's focus a little more on the pregnancy column and review. During pregnancy, red with a not recommended overlay applies to HPV vaccine. HPV is a protein-based subunit vaccine. It is not a live vaccine, but it's still not recommended during pregnancy. The asterisk means you should complete the series after pregnancy if needed. The contraindicated overlay on red applies to others that are live virus vaccines. There's still a precaution for men B during pregnancy as indicated in orange. Also bars for recombinant shingles vaccine, Hib vaccination, and all three pneumococcal vaccines are color-coded gray, meaning no recommendation or not applicable. In the 2021 schedule, the bar for PPSV23 vaccination during pregnancy was shaded purple, meaning recommended if additional risk factors or another indication. The rows for pneumococcal vaccination and Hep B are yellow across the board for all medical conditions listed on Table 2, reflecting ACIP's new updated recommendations for both vaccines. Read the notes section for details on who can receive specific Hep B vaccines, dosing intervals, and how many doses are needed. Here are some examples. Why does the Hep B overlay for pregnancy say see notes? Heplus Ab's two-dose series contains a new adjuvant and is not recommended during pregnancy due to lack of safety data. Who needs four Hep B doses? For adults receiving hemodialysis, a four-dose double-strength series of Hep B vaccine, Interjex B, is specifically recommended. The notes also outline time intervals for a four-dose accelerated series with the first three doses given over 30 days and a fourth dose at 13 months. It's all in the notes, read them. Next, step three, more about the notes, which begin with the vaccine making headlines. COVID-19 vaccines are listed first in the notes and recommended within the scope of EUA, emergency use authorization or BLA, biologics license application for the particular vaccine. There's also a convenient link to CDC's interim clinical considerations for use of COVID-19 vaccines, a live and useful document that's updated frequently. The rest of the notes are in alphabetical order by vaccine. The format's the same, routine recommendations, special situations, and shared clinical decision-making when indicated. The 2022 notes are more streamlined with lots of links to more details. Vaccine notes are your friend. Please use them. Let's wrap with step four, the appendix. The schedule's new guide to contraindication and precautions to commonly use vaccines. The first page is dedicated to flu vaccines. Contraindications and precautions for other vaccines follow. This quick table format is sure to come in handy. So there you have it a quick overview of the 2022 changes to ACIP's adult immunization schedule. Happy vaccinating. For the American College of Physicians, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer.